We jammed with, with one of these great blues players, John Hammond. So anyways, we get done, and Jeff and I go downtown, I forgot what town it is in West Virginia, just to go check it out, and we went to this little club. It was a coffee house, and there was a folk singer in there. Really bad folk singer. And this is, some people should stick to plumbing or stick to <laughs> other things they, they're good at, or mechanics or whatever. I mean, we need good plumbers, you know. But don't freaking pretend you're a musician if you ain't a musician. Get out, get out of here, you know. And this guy was like, you know, he's in there doing that that save the whales to, you know, save the whales, save the whales. He's going and singing that, and we're like, oh, God. And, and we're watching this guy, and he's hitting wrong chords. His guitar was out of tune and everything. So Jeff asked him. Jeff says, "Can I can I play a couple tunes?" He says, <laughs> "You? Yeah, whatever." You know, he didn't even know who Jeff Buckley was, and obviously he didn't know who I was either. I was nobody anyway. But Jeff gets up there and he got a couple of his band members, and they start. Jeff didn't do his songs. He started doing Led Zeppelin. <laughs> These are folkies in this club. They got up and left. It's just me and Jeff singing Zeppelin tunes. And, and he, he had a few beers and stuff, and we, we just had a great time. And I, I saw in Jeff extremes in him. Uh, like he was a man of extremes, just extremely loving, extremely passionate, extremely all him. It's just, it just Jeff. No, no, nothing hidden. He is powerful. You know, just, that's just the way it was. He's like Van Gogh or something. He was just going crazy. I thought, wow. And, and just, I don't know how many months later, he was dead. And, uh, but I got to, why did God let me spend two days with him? I don't know, but I did. And I'll never forget it. And I'm like with Tori Amos, I spent 280 days with her, and I'll never forget that either, you know. But um, this song, Jeff interpreted it. And it, it takes, I think it, do, it takes a great artist to interpret stuff that somebody else, great songwriters write, too. It's not just... It's not karaoke, it's not just singing the words, it's actually interpreting. And he did an awesome job with this Leonard Cohen song. So I, I started doing the song, and I started, what, this, what the hell is this song about? And, um, <clears throat> and it's about a lot of things, it's about relationships breaking down. And um, it's about forgiveness. And there's not a lot of that in the world, it really isn't. I, I, they say that, and they don't. But anyways, I started reading the lyrics. Whoa, King David. And I, I relate to King David, not because I'm a king, but the guy was a musician and he was screwed up. He wasn't perfect. He was, he was very messed up. And then one of the things he did was one night, he was married. He had, he had, he had a kingdom and he's checking out like high rise in New York City, checking out a woman taking a bath. He's like, wow, that woman looks pretty good. I think I want her. And back then, David could have anything he wanted. So he ordered one of his guys, go get that woman for me. What the heck? What a jerk. He brings her in, tries to romanticize her, but he ends up raping her. And uh, so he takes her, and he didn't know it, but she gets a hold of him, and she's pregnant. And he's freaking out. Oh, man, I messed up. Let's bring your husband off the battlefield. And he, her husband was one of the top warriors in the, in the Jewish army and, 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 and for the people. And he brought this guy in. The guy vowed to the king and to God, I will not have relations with my wife while I'm at war. So he didn't have, he didn't go to sleep with his wife. David was freaking out like, oh no, she's going to have this kid. And so he says, what am I going to do? This guy's going to find out. So he gets him killed. He killed her husband on the battlefield. So he's doing all these things wrong after wrong after wrong. And then she, the baby dies. Everything's going wrong. What does David do? He did, I guess, what we should do. I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I started reading that and started researching, like, wow, that's, that's pretty bad stuff. But he went directly to God, and he, he didn't go to the family, he didn't go to the woman, he didn't go to the gravesite of, of, the, of the man he killed, or the baby, or even the Jewish nation. He went to God and he said, I have done wrong against you. I've only, I've hurt you, I've done everything wrong. And, and he meant it, and when people mean it, for me, when somebody means, hey, I, I, I wrong, I screwed you wrongly. Don't you want to forgive him, or do you want to kick him in the ass? I don't know. If someone means it, let it go, because it's time to move on. I hate dragging stuff. Well, he was let go and, and favored. I'm thinking, how can this guy who murders somebody, who rapes somebody, who does this crap, get let go? But he was. And, and so Leonard Cohen takes the scripture and pulls it into this song. And it's like, wow, this is intense. I, I could not write anything like this. I wish somebody I made. I never would. But here it is. Secret chord that David played 
really please the Lord But you don't really care for music that much, do you? Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor Fall in the major lift, the battle king Composing Hallelujah, hallelujah. 